greeted Church of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are nearing the end of 2018. As we can all see few days are remaining and we will be getting into 2019. But as I look from the beginning of the year and even all other days not only 2018 I have seen that God has been good to us. He has been good to us as individuals, as families, and as churches. And we can testify to that. But one thing we need to know is that in this life which God has given us, there are basic necessities of life that are necessary for our existence. There are also certain things which are not so much of importance in our lives. Although we need them, because they make life much easier. But they are not that important. As Christians, when we have a need of any kind, whether basic necessities of life or any other thing, we pray unto God and present our requests. Sometimes we receive what we are praying for, but at other times we do not receive. We have seen that not everything that we present unto God in prayer, asking, no matter how much we need that item, we receive. Sometimes we receive. Sometimes we don't. But if we can take a look at our lives, we will discover that there are certain things which God gave us without us asking. Check your own life. Is everything that you have, did you ask for it from God? Isn't there some of the things that you received without asking? And the things that we normally do not ask for. Important as they are, they are sometimes taken for granted. So much that we even fail to say thank you to God. Because we did not ask for them. We were not seeing their importance. But God gave us. We sometimes fail to say thank you because we do not see their importance in our lives. And this will bring us to the topic of today's message which is titled Thanksgiving. Let us turn to Psalm 107, verse number 8, and read from there. Psalm 107, verse number 8. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
I thank you for the reading of your word, the sword of the spirit. Speak to us, Father, encourage us, show us the way to go. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Where we read, the word of God is saying, let them give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks for what? For his unfailing love. The same verse went on to say, let them give thanks unto the Lord for his wonderful deeds for mankind. Now who are them that must give thanks to the Lord? Who are these people? who must give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. It is you and I. It is every person who is alive today. Everyone who is alive today has to give thanks to the Lord. It is every person who is on the face of the earth today. Every one of us must give thanks to the Lord. We are to thank the Lord for the fact that we are alive. Even though we may not receive everything that we want, still we have to give thanks to the Lord. I did say it is not everything that we pray and ask for that we receive. Certain things we receive while certain things we do not. And some of the things we are given without even asking. The word of God is saying let them give thanks unto the Lord. Everyone who is alive today has to thank God. Thank God for being alive. Life, children of God, is a gift from God. A gift which is sometimes taken for granted. It is a gift which we receive without even asking. We do not stand every morning, afternoon and evening and say, Father God, I am asking to be alive tomorrow. God just give us. We may ask for the desires of our hearts. And it is rare that you can find a person praying every day saying, God, I want to live the next day. I want to live the next day. But here we are. We are alive without asking. Life is a gift from God. Which is sometimes taken for granted. To open these eyes in the morning after sleeping it is God's wonderful deeds for mankind. To find yourself walking, to be able to sit, to be able to stand, even to lift up your hand. It is God's wonderful deeds for mankind. There are people who wanted to be alive today. But it did not happen. They found themselves having passed from the land of the living against their own will. 
It is for that reason you and I who are still alive today have to say thank you Father for the life that you are giving me and the life that you are continually giving me. It may look like something which is very much minor. But it is, it is very important. You and I might have asked for financial breakthrough we might have asked for a certain job opportunity, a promotion, or this and that, and we never received. Instead, God chose to give us life. It is for that reason we need to thank him. Jesus said, you and I might have asked for the desires of our hearts. And no matter how many times we prayed asking for that, we did not receive. Instead, God chose to give us life. We need to thank him for that life. It might look like as if it is not important to say thank you, Father, for the life that you are giving me. Suppose God gives us a breakthrough or anything that we desire to have and remove life from us. How are we going to enjoy the breakthrough? When we look at it, we might say it is not important for me to stand and say thank you, Father, for the life that you are giving me. I need this and that. Give me that. Suppose he gives us the desires of our hearts. But he does not give us life. How are we going to enjoy those desires of our hearts. Life is important. It is a gift from God which is sometimes taken for granted. As I said earlier, we do not stand every morning and ask God to give us life for the next day and the next day and forever. We just find ourselves alive. For that, we need to thank God. He might not have given us what we wanted. And when we look at it, the whole year has ended. Asking for the same thing and never receive it. Let us look it at it the way Jesus said it. In this message, that God might not have given us what we asked for, but he gave us life which is very important. Sometimes as children of God or as people we may complain when we do not receive what we are praying for. What we do not realize is that we have been given what we did not ask. We do not realize that we have been given life. And that is the point Christ wants us to get today. He is saying everyone who is still alive today, whether we have received what we have been praying for or not, give thanks to the Lord. For what? for the life that he gave you and I. Even though we did not ask for that. 
While I was meditating on this message, I was reminded of some times when Christ said, This person is asking for breakthrough, but he has a spirit of destruction. Even if he is given that breakthrough, he will not see it because the spirit of destruction will destroy everything. Let him first get rid of the spirit of destruction. It is the same as this message to say, even though we did not receive what we were praying for, we need to thank God because the life that he gave us is more important that, than what we were praying for. If we had received what we were praying for and God removes life from us, we were not going to see what we were praying for. For that reason, everyone who is is alive today, whether he has received what he wanted or not, has to thank God for the life that he received. Again, as I was meditating on this message, I was reminded of a certain trip I had with Pastor Lazarus. Many years ago, as a young couple, I mean at the time, we loved to travel and visit places that we read in the Bible. As well as other tourist destinations. We used to love that. And it was not wrong. Now this particular trip that I want to speak about which came to my mind because of this message. It was a 14 days trip which we would sail from Europe to Africa and back to Europe after 14 days where we would take a plane back to South Africa. Along the way, we visited many tourist destinations. But there was this important one which we read, which, which was written on the itinerary. It was a visit to a place called Malta. And I believe most of us knows that, that place. Not physically, I mean we have read in the Bible. Do you not know Malta? That island which Paul, Apostle Paul had a shipwreck. In chapter 28, that island which Paul, a viper, fastened itself on his hand. A snake fastened itself on his hand. That was the island, that was one of the places we were to visit. And for people like us, it was very important. Because who does not want to see the places that are written in the Bible? But important as it was, the ship sailed past, it did not stop. And you can imagine what would you feel? You have read in the Bible. Now you are saying to yourself, this is an opportunity for me to go and see that place. Where the apostle 
Apostle Paul had a shipwreck. I am going to see the place physically. And when I come back, I will tell others. And the ship sailed past. Did not stop. We could have complained and say, but Father, all things are possible with you. Why did you not make that ship to stop. It was there on the itinerary. It was important for your children to see that place. Why did you not make that ship to stop? At that time, I did not realize that for us to miss that, God had something important for us. Something which was very important than visiting Malta. I am only realizing it now when I was meditating on this message. When Christ said to me, a person can ask for this and that and never receive it. But God gives him life. He must be thankful for that. But at the time, it never occurred to me that what God gave us was more important than visiting Malta. Now, on the last night of the trip, when we were sailing to Barcelona, where we were going to catch a plane back to South Africa, the ship was caught in between very strong winds. The hurricane winds shook that ship big as it was. Violently. And anyone can, could see that for us to reach our destination, it would require the message of God. There was no more life. The ship was shaking too much. And I doubt if I ever slept. I was thinking of the children at home. They were still very young. What will happen? The ship was shaking throughout the night. In the middle of nowhere. Even if you say you swim, you swim up to where? If the winds were shaking that big thing, what about you? It was clear that there is no life the next day unless if God intervened. But the next morning, by the mercies of God, we arrived and we said thank you. Now let me ask you, I said I did not see it at that time that God was going to give us life. If it was you, what would you choose? To visit Malta or to get life? What were you going to choose? Yes, you can go to Malta, but the next evening when you are sailing, you lose your life. It only occurred to me now that it is not necessary to complain when we do not receive what we wanted. God has prepared something much better for us. In our case, when he gave us life. We would have gone to Malta and be buried in the sea. 
And I was not going to stand and tell anyone that I have seen Malta. But here I am today. I am standing testifying that God protected us. God gave us life. What is it that you are looking for? Which it has been very long. And you are not receiving. See it in this manner. You might not have received it. But for you to be seated here. It is God's wonderful deeds. He gave you life. But you don't have what you were praying for. Be thankful for that. Yes, you can continue and pray and ask for what you want. But Christ is saying, we need to thank God for life. He said life is very important. He said many people wanted to, to be alive today. But they are not here. They have passed from the land of the living. But you and I, we are alive. And that is important. That is what we can stand today and thank God for. And remove all the complaints that we have. Life is a gift from God. If you cannot get it through this message, first get into trouble where you will see that there is no life. There will be no life tomorrow. Then you will see that it is better I put aside this that I want and thank God for life. Before that time arrives, we may see life as something which is not that much of importance. Something that we need to stand and say thank you. When God has not given me that car, that house, and this and that that I've been asking for. Why must I thank him? Thank him for life. For your life. I should thank him for my life. You should thank him for your own life. I have learned a lot from David. King David. He is one of the few people who saw the importance of thanksgiving. He is one of the few people who valued the gift of life. No matter which season David was going through, he would still thank God and worship God. In the midst of difficulties, King David would still give thanks to God and worship God. To show that thanksgiving was very important in his life, by the time when he was the king of Israel, he chose certain people and designated them by name and gave them a task specifically to stand before the Ark of the Covenant and give thanks to the Lord. It does not mean that the man was not going through difficulties. But he saw the importance of thanksgiving to the Lord. To a point which he chose certain men and gave them a task of standing before the Ark of the Covenant on a daily basis to thank the Lord. Let us go to First Chronicles 16. First 
First Chronicles 16. Start by 7 and 8. That day, David first committed to Asaph and his associates this psalm of thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. The king committed a psalm specifically for thanksgiving. The whole psalm, even though we did not read it. The king committed that psalm to Asaph specifically for thanksgiving. Again, let us go to 37 to 41, the same chapter. David left Asaph and his associates before the ark of the covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly. According to each day's requirements, he also left Obed Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed Edom, son of Jetu, Jetu Tan, and also Hosa were gatekeepers. David left Zadok, the priest, and his fellow priest before the tabernacle of the Lord at the higher place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of the pen offering regularly morning and evening in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord which he had given Israel. With them were Haman and Jeduthan and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Verse 41 says with them were Haman and Jeduthan. And the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord. King David saw it necessary that he should thank God on a continuous basis to him thanksgiving and worship were very important no matter what season of life he was going through those men who were chosen and designated by name they were to stand before the ark of the covenant and give thanks to the Lord whether something that is not good happened the men were to stand there and give thanks to the Lord not that they were thanking the Lord for the bad thing that happened in their lives. But thanking God for all the good things that he is giving them. Including life. Which is the most important. If you can check the former life of David. David from the time he was anointed king of Israel before he sat on the throne of Israel. He was always on the run. Running away from Saul who was hunting him down in order to take his life. I want to believe that for the king to see the importance of thanking the Lord for his life. It was because he saw that the way Saul was hunting him down. If God did not intervene, there would have been no life for him. Same applies to you and I. We are living, most of the things are happening spiritually. And we cannot see them. For King David, 
Saul was persecuting him or he was running after him physically. That is the reason he could value the importance of life. That is the reason he could say thank you God for the life that you are giving me. But for you and I, most of the things are happening spiritually. And we cannot see them. Evil spirits, demons, they are hunting us down daily. And for us to be alive, it is the wonderful deeds of God. It is the same as David. It is just that in our case, it is not visible. It is a spiritual war which we are overcoming, we are winning spiritually as well. That is the reason we are alive today. According to the will of the, weak, of the evil one, he does not want us to see, he does not want to see us alive. Just like Saul. He did not want to see David alive. But because of the mercies of God, David lived and he even sat on the throne of Israel. Evil spirits, they do not want to see us alive. They are after us. But by the mercies of God, we are living and we shall continue to live and even receive what we are praying for. The first which is important is life. After receiving life, we can then receive whatever we want. Jesus is saying to you and I, thank God whether you receive what we are asking for or not. Thank God for giving you what you prayed for. And again, thank God for giving you and I what we did not pray for, which is life. That is what he said we should thank God for. Life and protection. Lastly, let us go to 2 Samuel 12. 14 up to 20. Second Samuel 12. But because by doing this you have made the enemies of the Lord show utter contempt, the son born to you will die. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became ill. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and went into his house and spent the night lying on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused, and he would not eat any food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's servants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they thought, while the child was still living, we spoke to David, but he would not listen to us. How can we tell him the child is dead? He may do something desperate. David noticed that his servants were whispering among themselves, and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied. He is dead. Then David got up from the ground. After he had washed, put on lotions, and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he Today, went... After David learned that his prayer request was not answered, he was praying for his son to live. After he came to learn that the child has died, verse 20 says, 
Then David got up from the ground. After he had washed, put on lotions and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. This is very strange. You have just learned of something that you did not want to happen. And still, you are going to the house of the Lord to worship him. After you fasted and prayed and asked for something and he never gave you. And then here you are still walking to the house of the Lord going to worship him this is very strange this is what we as children of God need to learn from David when David had prayed for something and it was granted to him he would thank God and worship God when he had prayed for something and it was not granted, he would still worship God. In every kind of season, David would still give thanks to God and worship him. This is what you and I need to emulate. I am not saying we should rejoice when our loved ones have passed. What I am saying is that no kind of situation must remove us from thanking our God and worshipping him for what he has done for us. In this paragraph, that we read Prophet Nathan was sent by God to go and speak to David to rebuke him for what he had done. It was during that time when King David took Uriah's wife and made him and made her his own wife. And a child was born out of that relationship. And God was not pleased. He sent Prophet Nathan to go and rebuke the king. And also to tell him that the child that was born out of this forbidden relationship is not going to live. He will die. Even though God had decreed death unto that child, King David prayed and he even fasted for the mercies of God. But on the seventh day, the child died as it was decreed by Nathan. Now, after David learned of the death of his child, he continued to worship God. That is a lesson for me and you. To say, if what we have asked for, God does not grant it to us. We should still continue to thank God for what he had given us. For the life that he has given us as well as for all other things that he gave us. I am not necessarily referring to death cases. I am just pointing it out to show that no amount of pain 
must make our eyes blind to such a point that we fail to see that we are still alive. We need to thank God for being alive. And whatever we need, God may give us in the future no amount of pain no amount of lack must manage to remove a believer from thanking the Lord for the life that he has as well as for all other things that God is giving us those that we prayed for and those that we did not pray for as I am concluding, Mangvala, let me ask you in buze. and also ask myself buze nami. what is it Yini. that you and I have been praying for and up to today we have never received? Yini mina nawe, ebe si kulegela, figela na mthanja, skagaya mugele. When you look at it, you are even getting old. And you have not yet received it. You have fasted. You have prayed for that thing. It has not yet come. What is it? Isn't that thing about to take you out of thanking the Lord? because you say I have read the word of God and it was even preached from the pulpit one day to say this kind can only move by fasting and prayer do you still remember that message but you will be asking yourself, I have fasted, I do not know how many times. I have prayed, I do not know how many times. But still, I have not received it. Jesus sent me to say, Thank God for giving you life. You and I, even though we have not received what we are praying for, God has given us what we did not ask. And he said, that is life. Life on this earth. That is what he wants us to thank God for. Be thankful for the life that we have. Many people wanted to be alive today, but they have passed from the land of the living. But you and I were still alive. Let us see things the way Christ wants us to see them from today. He said we need to thank God for giving us life. Even if we did not receive what we were praying for, thank God for the life that he has given us. And he went on to say, also thank God for giving you what you have prayed for. But number one, thank him for the life. As we are standing, and the worshippers are coming to the microphone, Jesus wants us to see that life is very important. We might pray for this and that and receive them. But if we do not receive life, whatever we have been given will be of no use. He wants us to begin to see that what we have 
We must value it. And thank God for that. Every person who is on the face of the earth today has to thank God. Everyone who still has the breath of life in them must thank the Lord. Let us forget about what we have not received and take this time to thank God for the life that he has given us.